Hi guys and welcome to another quick review and as you can see today's quick review about two HPI monster trucks it is Savage XS and mostly we're actually gonna talk about Savage XL the big brother which is a flux with XL chassis basically so can we say this is Savage Flux HP? Uh, probably yes, with extended chassis to the XL specification. So today I'm gonna cover, first of all, of course, reliability of these two monster trucks, main problems. And of course we're gonna talk about some upgrades, which do make sense, don't make sense. And I guess the conclusion can be drawn from all this review about actual quality. Is it worth to buy this type of a monster truck from HPI or not? Let's start with Savage Excess Flux. So, Savage Excess. So as you can see, I run different tires on it, which I'm not sure from which car and manufacturer, just pick them up from the local hobby shop and that's pretty much it. So this car, because of its size, you just cannot run it anywhere. Basically it needs to run on some quite smooth, comparably smooth surface comparing to what you can do with a big one. So it's a monster truck, but for a tarmac, I would say. So that's why I changed those standard tires with these ones. Because these are a little bit better in terms of handling and the grip on those surfaces where this Savage Excess can actually run on. Just for like everywhere, it's just too small cannot run on just unprepared surface like in a field of with grass or snow it just doesn't run very well just too small for anything like that so let's go down to the technical side of the things so first of all generically this is not too bad of an HPI model so with all my usage of this model I had problems with just several things basically not as many things as with Savage Flux HP so first of all if you for whatever crazy reason decide to buy this one you need to think about replacing the servo motor which is right under this cover so the stock servo motor is just too weak for the steering. So when it feels, of course, on the, under hard acceleration on the turns, it just doesn't hold the front at all. So it's hard to steer and so on and so forth. Another thing is because this small truck for its weight has so much power even on 2S LiPo batteries. It is almost impossible to hold it on a straight line under under hard acceleration with just a, just your input into the remote control. It's almost impossible. It will be just everywhere, or you don't accelerate very quickly. So the solution for that is this. So a solution for the problem with unbelievable, uncontrollable steering is this little, little module right here I have installed. So, this module is a drift control module, so-called, from HPI. And basically, it is a gyro, it's a gyroscope, which controls the steering through the servo motor and what it actually does is if it's installed correctly and configured correctly 
it controls the front wheels to compensate for oversteer. So if your bag goes this way, it will actually move the wheels like that just to compensate. So and it works when adjusted correctly quite seamlessly. Maybe there is a little bit interference when you turning on like a medium speed. It kind of tries to put the wheels a little bit back, not allowing them to steer to the maximum to the left or to the right. But it's not too big of a trouble. But the biggest advantage is on the straight line. Now you can accelerate. You basically can give a full throttle. Even if the wheels are spinning, it still can hold the car pretty much to a reasonable uh, proportion, I would say. So it's much easier to drive a car with this module installed. So it is definitely a recommended upgrade. Yeah, and the radio, you can see here, it's a Futaba radio, which I installed. It comes with uh, RF40 as a standard, which is not too bad of a radio, much better than this one, which is a TF20, RF20 combination, which comes with Savage HP Flux. So, this is about one of the most important upgrades on this one. So, let's say if you bought this model, you bought the drift control module, installed it and configured it correctly so it actually would compensate for oversteer. Change the servo, so now it could actually work properly. So the one I have in here, it's actually 24 kilos of torque, 24 kilograms by centimeter, I think this is how we measure it. It's a high-tech radio, sorry, high-tech uh, servo motor. But now a problem which I found was with uh, speed control and a part of the speed control which powers the radio. As soon as I installed high-performance servo motor in this thing, uh, this speed controller couldn't provide enough power for the radio and the server to work correctly. So basically if you turn the wheels to the left and to the right few times, the gyro was reloading and it was just cutting off the power basically to the gyro. So it couldn't power up the whole thing standard RF40 receiver, high-tech, high-performance servo. I don't remember which model it is actually, but you can find any similar ones on online, no problem, 24 kilograms approximately. So I had to add this piece, another upgrade. And this is a capacitor, basically. A capacitor which is connected to the radio between the power and the ground. So what that thing does, it basically compensates for uh, fluctuation in the input voltage. So those momentary things when the servo is drawing too much of a current to turn the wheels, the capacitor is actually compensating for momentary load and that is sufficient for the gyro not to reboot and everything works quite well now in terms of the control of the wheels so steering works well and of course yes i do have a futaba radio in uh, receiver in there right now and this is the one which comes with uh, what's the name of this model is it like 4pl i think this is what i have not the best one, but quite a good one. It allows for a lot of customization, so it's very, very different comparing to RF40 in terms of a feel and the control. Of course, if you adjust that correctly to work, I mean, to 
to a way you like it so okay so back to x s flux so monetary upgrades again server a drift control and you need a capacitor and after that you kind of think you done but now about reliability issues so approximately on the third run like the third battery on this thing I noticed a strange noise coming from the transmission try to search for where it's coming from and it was coming from the rear wheels so basically what happened is right here when the shaft the dog bone comes into the differential where is a cup and within that cup on the dog bone one of this uh, tiny you know inserts the sticks were broken so it had just one left so one broken so it was like that so i brought the car of course straight to the hobby shop i bought it from and they just said we hpi don't provide a warranty for things like that oh, it was amazingly for me like how can we say that because it was like just battery number three in it and it's already broke so it looks like a you know problem from the factory you know but we refused to replace it by through a warranty so i had to actually buy this new dog bones two dog two new dog bones for the rear so i bought actually four to have some spares but for whatever reason after like one and a half month running this car over and over again nothing broke nothing like that so the t bones sorry the dog bones which are in there right now just work fine so it looks like it was a problem with those two installed from the factory so three batteries and when you need to fix something well that seems to be not the best option considering the money spent okay so what else yeah regarding the normal wear uh, i don't know if you can see it here or not let me try to zoom in on it but basically probably won't be able to see it oh yeah here it is just need to turn it a little bit let's check again yeah, it is coming into view yeah right where on that cup let me try to focus on that one specifically yeah you can see there is a wear on this cup quite extensive i would say and this is on the both sides on the front and in the rear coming out of a gearbox just right where so those cups are wear quite a lot even though i grease them a lot it does not help and i think this is due to the angle and you can see it it's a quite a high angle at which the dog bone goes from the gearbox into towards the differential and because of that angle uh, there is always a lot of friction there in the middle so the dog bone wears the cup extensively so it was to be replaced quickly but i guess that is just a flaw in the original design maybe not too bad one it's just something you need to keep in mind and let's say after like 30 runs or so you probably need to just go and replace those things and the worst of all so it was all running fine for quite a while and the worst of all suddenly happened a few days back when my ASC which is a Vapor Pro in this case so this is the ASC just gave up 
so now it runs for approximately and it happens every time like that it runs for approximately five six minutes and when it stops so the symptoms would be like the battery is discharged now like a cut off something like that just it doesn't want to run anymore but when you plug in the battery for charging you can still see what is about 7.4 volts in it so it's not even you know discharging properly so it's something happens so it measures the voltage of the battery incorrectly or i don't know what but there is or it just overheats and then i don't know disables the power i don't know what it is the logic or protection logic within the vapor pro but it does not work well anymore so and you would need to replace it if i would need to if i would like to run this car because otherwise it's just useless so the batteries i was running are this this is nanotech turnigy fine 5.3 ampere hours 5300 it would be in normal terms so i have two of those as you can see here so the runtime in this car with that battery is anything between 30 minutes to even like 45 depending on how much you actually load it so how much throttle do you need for all the time you run it so is it worth the money you would ask i would say probably not would i buy this again or recommend it to anyone no so and would i actually want to replace this esc and keep running this car well, probably not worth the money to spend on another esc that's for sure so this is going into the trash of course i'm going to remove radio and the drift control and my nice server and the rest of the things just going to the trash to the garbage rubbish and so on and so forth whatever you name it in your country so that's it about access and let's move to the big one flux hp okay to the big one now so originally this car was savage flux hp so i did few mods to it basically all of those most of those actually available from hpi so first thing i did i extended the chassis so it is excel chassis right now so these are the old plates which came with uh, hp flux flux hp is a two and a half millimeter thick i think or approximately something like that so uh, excel plates are a little bit thicker so we are I think three millimeter thick so that was one of the mode um, generically regarding the reliability i guess when you get the kit it says it's ready to run it comes with this uh, tf20e radio in my case and there is a transmitter which is rf20 right where so and a car completely assembled only thing you need is actually batteries for the transmitter six batteries where and then two batteries for the car and 7.4 volts or 11.1 and you're ready to go in theory and actually in our case we bought two cars so i bought one and my nephew bought one and we've been thinking of racing when you know just anywhere you know off-road in the field just because of the height of this car i mean it looked like it's it can it, it would be capable comparing to a flux excess which is so small this one looked like it's capable of running just pretty much anywhere and that was actually true but in terms of a ready to run uh and we just took so my nephew bought his car first and 
we took it out so it lasted for I don't know six seven minutes and that's it so what happened is and I'll show it here on this motor this is 2200 motor original flux motor the pinion gear moved forward so much that it couldn't engage with um, a spur gear anymore and that's it so after like six minutes seven minutes of running it stopped and this is down to ready to run so basically if you have no tools out of a box the car couldn't survive just one battery pack that's it so it stopped weird noise a little bit we were afraid what something broke but in reality we just had to realign the pinion gear and tighten it up so this is how all of this started and i bought a car the same same savage flux hp and we took it out for you know just for fun riding no jumping just riding around and blah 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 and what happened is This thing is broken on my nephew's car. And then after a while it did break on my car as well. And this is the piece which goes in the standard flux HP. Right here. Oh sorry. Like that. Yeah. Basically here you have the bearings for a wheel and the cup for the dog bone is on this side and there is a linkage like this running from here and attaches to a differential case over there so and it just did broke like that See, this part of big part of plastic is missing completely. So I would say this is definitely a bad design from HPI because it just for all the matters things like that don't hold very well. And that was not it. So of course this this parts this part is very cheap. So we just bought another one and blah 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 and you can also take so for my nephew what we did we took this part from a front wheel and replace it with a back wheel and that's it or you can just you know swap back with back of walls around because we're symmetrical completely so if the thing broke on the right then you can replace it and it will work fine on the left so before buying a new part you can swap them a few times so that one so eventually and also once actually uh, it didn't break but i managed to uh, bend this one so this metal part in the middle so it looked like you know distorted like that and i had to uh, straighten it up so it would work well again so after all of that we decided to go and we bought Integy partware. I'll show you in a second. Yeah, so this is the Integy part I was talking about. You can see it right here. So, and it's much simpler suspension actually now because you see this is how it looked like. But this whole thing, whole piece, it's actually attaches to another piece which used to be here, another plastic bit. And this is kind of allowed to move like that to uh, for a uh, tire alignment, which is not really that necessary in the rear. But yeah, so now it's very simple. So one this one this piece like this and another piece where this attaches to is now gone completely. So only thing I have there is just this aluminum aluminum piece and. It has a new axle right here, which is stronger than the original one. And it holds together very well since that replacement through some little crashes, I guess. It all survived really, really well. 
I think that's quite a good upgrade, but again, when you just buy this car out of a store, these parts are not reliable at all. So it's almost like a man not almost, but this I must say it's mandatory upgrade to get the integer and put it right where. A bad thing about the integer is that it does not have a built-in uh, toy, to is it like toe angle, whatever it's called. So wheels are actually completely parallel one to another. So no anti-dive on the acceleration. This is not good, but the strength is good. So not ideal, but much better on stock. So, so that's one. What else did we break? Oh yeah. And now a kind of a mandatory upgrade is for the steering. So this is what was what is actually left from my steering. Original one. So my nephew had a problem with uh, steering as well. So it all broke about the same way, disintegrated. And yeah, this is the original part which is this is like a repaired one which is like still okay in one piece there's some upgrade here as well which is the upgrade is this uh, wall bearings in here so it comes with uh, plastic inserts instead of uh, ball bearings so. so I put ball bearings first and then I just decided to go with upgraded aluminum part because this plastic disintegrates when you run the car properly and becomes this okay so aluminum steering is also what I'm using is also integer let me show it to you You can see it here a little bit, and also I have upgraded. You don't see it here, but I do have upgraded spring for the steering saver on this one. Which, in my case, for this uh, uh, integer was a complete fit, very well fitted from the standard, not standard, but upgrade part for the, from the HPI. Because the integer by itself it comes with quite a weak spring for the steering saver. I also had to tighten it quite a bit. Yeah, one of the other upgrades to this car is a steering servo. Yeah, we won't be able to see it here very well. But let me kind of just out a little bit more and try to show you. Yeah, basically I have a Futaba steering servo which is at 7.4 volts pulls 39 kilograms or 37 something like that and yeah that was a mandatory upgrade because the stock server it's junk so we just we just go straight into the trash it's not able to steer the car at all so it goes anywhere except for the direction you want to point into. Uh, yeah, so again, ready to run points. I guess close to zero on this car. Okay, so what else? Another part which I upgraded are shocks. So these are the stock shocks. And if I take this one and try to focus on it, let's try. 
and zoom in and you can see the oil right right here so basically after just a few runs just after a few runs four oh sorry two of these shocks in my case started to leak oil and it was no fun at all so it's all plastic yeah maybe we are big bores but the quality of this just zero so just few runs and we're leaking not good so i had to replace them so and both me and my nephew we bought these nice aluminum shocks because it's the only option from hpi where you can actually get the aluminum shock cups as well not just the shocks but shock cups and we thought it will be a good upgrade but it is not that good reason is that shafts in these shocks are way too soft so they do bend actually they are not strong enough and when they bend as you can see here it's all they bend around the bottom area right here so the spring distorts because this cup here where the springs installs is not uh, how to say not straight anymore and you get this noise from the springs and it's usually happening at the rear so front is holding up better because of less load on it when the car runs because when you almost constantly almost all the time on the on the throttle so the rear kind of dies a little bit and then you know the bumps, some of the bumps hit through the suspension travel and you just, you know, <sighs> bent those shocks, which is not good, but well, this is how it is. I'm not sure what else I can get which is better on this, and again, counting the money spent, do you really want to add more dollars into the car? Probably not into this piece of crap, sorry. <clears throat> so I'm gonna leave with these ones for some time now. Okay, and you probably notice what I don't have speed controller on it, and I'll come back to that later. So, comparing to the car as it was purchased originally, the things which I changed are shocks, frame, uh, three rear pieces for two integer uh, pieces. And of course with XL extended chassis you get extended, I don't know, whatever you call it, wrist pieces where the wheels are mounted to. And they come with spacers, so the car actually gets wider and I had a concern that it actually wouldn't be so stable and so on and so forth, but it seems like it... Oh well, sorry, my camera overheated, so where we were. Uh, yeah, thanks to Sony NAX5N, it overheats when you shoot video for a long time. Another crap product from a modern generation of products. Yeah, but anyway, so extended chassis, extended whatever wheel mounts and... Uh, well, what else? So shocks replaced, frame replaced. Uh, I also replaced the motor, so the original is 2200 kV, which is a very powerful motor when you run it at a uh, total of 4S, sorry, total of 6S, so two batteries, three cell each, and we, on this car we actually go, uh, we connect it so the voltage is doubled of, uh, so out of 11 point, two 11.1s give you uh, 22.2. So this motor is very powerful and by my calculation, basic calculation, if we're not lying about 85% efficiency, you should get about 2.2 kilowatts of power, which is a lot in my opinion for this car, for the size. And my nephew actually, he does have uh, two 
11.1 volt 8.4 ampere hours batteries so 8400 milliampere hours it would be and we tried it so with a stock gearing 20 to 44 it runs like crazy it's very hard to control but yeah there is a fun factor to it of course so but i decided what i'm gonna go with uh, 8000 milliampere hours batteries and 7.4 volts just to you know save a transmission not to destroy the transmission so i have these four batteries here so two of them so i kind of isolated it all in uh, electric tape but these two are batteries from hpi those 8000 batteries from hpi and these two are from team orion and except for this carbon kind of style finish it's not real carbon but it's just a painting so it looked like a carbon we are exactly the same so same same capacity the feel of them is exactly the same so i'm not sure what this we both all these batteries we do have internal balancer so you can just simply charge without connecting a balancing socket and i checked it later it was balanced quite well well sorry again my camera overheated again so no good words for nix 5n and shooting into mp4 1080 so where we were so yeah i've raised blah 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 the motor so i'm running right now the motor which is uh, 2650 kv you can see it right there comparing to a standard motor it's a bit smaller in terms of it is actually a little bit shorter and lighter and gives a bit more rpm per volt which in the configuration when you're running two 7.4 volt batteries in this car is optimal actually so far I had no problem with overheating with this motor so it was not hotter one whatever just I could touch it with my finger without you know feeling any discomfort it's warm but it's not like crazy hot or something like that so I'd say this motor works quite well but of course you cannot run uh, 2650 with, 11, with two 11.1 volt batteries there's no way I mean there is a way but it will die quite quickly or your speed control will die, will die and of course it died anyway even on standard config but it, uh, I'll talk about that a bit later so let's cover those upgrades first and the pieces to replace I guess so with steering, standard steering as I already said it's scrap so I replaced it with aluminum, aluminum is still holding not too many runs on it so we shall see with the time so radio is crap, again I'm running with Otaba receiver in this car and you can see it right there probably, it's a Futaba receiver and I do have a drift control on this car as well it is not so much needed on this car as on the small XS but still it helps a lot, definitely especially on a straight line, you can open the throttle hard, no problems at all the car is still controllable which is very very good in my opinion so definitely recommend it this part never broke always worked very well probably the only hpi part so far which does work actually <laughs> so what else a clutch clutch right here yeah it's a spring to adjust the clutch so clutch doesn't hold at all so if you set it to a specification as hpi recommends it will spin as soon as it starts spinning uh, this nut will unscrew and you will lose all the power at all so it basically the motor will spin but car will not go anywhere and this if you try to move it this uh, spur gear will overheat and will melt some parts of a gearbox as well if it's overheating too much so be careful with that so my advi advice is so i'm running a ceramic clutch upgrade again from hpi and i tightened this nut completely to like insanity so that's the only way how to make it not to spin 
with a time, so it seems to be running okay with that part, I mean. So a gearbox and inside of a gearbox a crap as well, so it's too much of a play, I had to shim it a lot to bring it to like something like reasonable. It still has some play in it, but it's not so extensive as before. And then you shim it, be careful. So you need to shim it so you can still have some play in the front dog, oh sorry, in the rear dog bone, which comes from a gearbox to rear differential, and some play in the front as well. And the best to shim it so the play amount would be exactly the same in the front and in the rear. So that helps on the hard landings to the rear or to the front. If the play is too low, what will happen is that this uh, dog bone, which goes from the diff to the gearbox, it will be kind of compressed and then you break uh, this part right here. So let's put it here, try to focus on it. See that? That is something we call bulletproof differentials yeah so obviously it is not this is a proof it does break so i had to replace this but that's not the only problem with differentials the problem is what when i disassembled the standard ones and as you can see i'm running integer aluminum differential cases where yeah. So the differential it's in itself inside it, uh, it has a uh, four screws which hold like a big, big differential gear two to the dif aluminum differential case. In the rear, those were unscrewed, so not enough Loctite on them or whatever. I don't know, but this is what I got as well. Probably that contributed to this thing breaking. And yeah, I had to open with differentials and within the differentials I also found some problems and that problem was, so this is not a heavy duty one, this is something I kind of bought as well thinking about proper 17 millimeter conversion which I will cover later, basically this This is what it is inside of a differential, you see, this bit and this pin, right? So this pin was disintegrated on both sides of a rear differential. So this is internally, so I had to disassemble it, replace the pins, assemble it again, loop everything and yeah, so. So this bulletproof differential is a piece of crap as well. So HPI quality zero. Maintenance time huge. Fun factor zero. Well, again, I have this aluminum differential cases as well because the standard ones just flexing too much. It does not hold the differential in place very well. It's a lot of flex and wear and it all just doesn't really work for me at least. So aluminum seems to be much more robust but we shall see how it holds with a time. So far this thing is holding. Even though with uh, integer parts we had at Derlin some kind of a plastic pieces which go around the bearings, around the ball bearings and we need to insert them into... Oh well, I won't see it here but... Yeah, right where in the center and the cup and where, where the dog bone goes into the cup. So we are inside where is a derlin bit which goes around the ball bearing. So for for this integer, for example, out of four, like two in the rear and two in the front, out of four, three of them didn't want to fit into the holes. So I had to basically polish them a little bit with sandpaper so they would actually fit. Yeah, so integer is not ideal as well. We have some quality problems, but well, after it's all done, it could be fitted together. 
close very well now at least for now so what else tires yeah these are the original tires from HPI Flux Savage HP so I do have some holes drilled in there so this allows the water and the rest of the crap which goes into the tire to actually like fly away on a high RPM when it spins quickly so these tires were holding quite well we didn't break or anything like that so some of the part of this like shiny uh, paint is missing but it's not really I mean not really that big of a technical problem so we can still drive it like that even though it doesn't look that well so so those were okay but of course for the bigger chassis you wanted I wanted something bigger and I bought these tires from uh, a nitro savage excel and the grip on these tires is actually much better than on the standard ones so you can see the size difference as well so these tires are much bigger see so we're adding nice right height to the car and grip as I said is much better but the problem is that the rims on these tires are very weak especially around this point much weaker than the standard savage tires see there is, there is a reinforcement in here everywhere yeah and no reinforcement on the XL tires on the XL rims sorry so I ended up actually breaking one of them so it broke around around here leaving me with just an axle with a little piece of plastic attached and the wheel just you know run away so I ended up buying another rim which was the same as the standard on uh, a flux HP and remounting the tire from the broken rim into this one so now I have three wheels from with a rims from XL and one with a rim from standard Savage well it's again it's not the worst case on earth and the good thing about these tires they are actually very light so we not load the engine too much not load the electric motor sorry too much so but because of this now having one tire different one rim is di different from the rest it was just aesthetically not so good for me so currently I'm running the trenchers from the pro line so these things do look more aggressive they are a little bit bigger when they are actually even a little bit bigger than the standard Excel tires it's a five millimeter difference probably not so obvious on the camera but there is a difference bad thing about them actually two bad things about them so one is what the trenchers actually three bad things about them one bad thing with the trenchers are actually much heavier than Excel tires which is loading the motor more so less runtime not dramatically but still it's loading the transmission a bit more still not dramatically another bad thing about them what we actually even though we look aggressive the grip is actually worse comparing to the standard terrapin on the excels so those excels actually gripping much better on this so weight, grip, bad and because the plastic is kind of nylon I think and here it's very different to the plastic on the HPI tires so with a standard 17 millimeter mounting which consists of this 
crappy pieces and then nuts like this yeah to hold it in place uh, basically this mounting does not hold the terrapins well so the terrapins will unscrew eventually and when they do this hex here will be damaged so I guess it's, I can say it is mandatory if you want to run terrapins sorry if you want to run uh, proline trenchers you have to upgrade to a proper 17 millimeter mountings and if Savage Excel size uh, how to say axles I guess is how you can call them there is no way because HPI does not provide a proper standard way for the extended axles and the proper 17 millimeter mounts there is just no option like that so I had to do it myself and I managed to do that so what I run here inside are a standard Savage Excel axles so this aluminum spacer in here it actually it's actually trimmed to 13 and a half millimeters precisely and when this 17 millimeter hex is right here uh, they go through whatever I don't remember what model of a car it is but it's HPI as well these are the ones where the pin is not just inserted but you can actually screw it in yeah so it has a fret on one side and to mount this you need to drill a hole through the standard axle so the hole is already there but it is not big enough to fit this um, pin which comes with uh, 17 millimeter adapters and the size is actually the same for this one I run and for for something like this which is another option from HPI but this this one does not have uh, this one does not have a screw it's here the pin is just inserted so so I had to drill a hole the whole size so the drill I used was uh, 17 uh, sorry the drill I used was three millimeter in diameter and it was exactly the right much for the pin to go in sit there tightly so my nephew used uh, drilled 3.1 millimeter hole and I think the difference is so a three millimeter wasn't good fit for him, but I think the difference is because the different uh, I know drills I know, these pieces we do have a little tolerances. So, but the important pieces, uh, the important thing is to trim the spacer to exactly thirteen and a half millimeter, and this is what I remember by mind. So trim it. And it should be very precise. So I did it exactly so it moves. It doesn't create any additional friction, but I don't have much of a play at all, just very little play. Yeah, and this nut over here, it also holds all of this piece together. So it's like a nut which is which has one low smaller side, so it's inverted, the smaller size goes in and then you just screw it in and it all centered correctly, holds correctly together. And that's that's a way how to keep how to keep the trenchers from unscrewing. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. So, trenchers. So, we do have one good thing about them. Actually, two good things about them. First of all, the rims are very strong. So, they hold all the heats very well. It's a big plus, I guess, for reliability. And also, because the diameter of the rims is a little bit higher comparing to but it is available from HPI for a monster truck. The steering response is actually better with the trenchers comparing to HPI tires. Again, it's because it's just a little bit less flex of uh, rubber because of uh, bigger rims. 
so this is about the, all about the tires I think so yeah an important bit speed controller so it's missing because it catch on fire I have another video on my channel you can look at it aftermath of that fire and it just happened by itself so there was no heat or anything the car just running on a straight line this is the whole thing started with the symptoms like moving from the dead stop where it was like a strange noise like seems like like motor couldn't spin or something like blah, 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 blah. when it started to spin the car started to go forward and then it just started um, to burn and the flame was quite big it's probably like like that big a good thing that i'm running this uh, body shell from excel and through the hole i could actually see the fire and i managed to extinguish it extinguish it quite quickly so i was cleaning this uh, body shell for a long time with uh, you know different solvents i guess this is how we called but still you can see some marks from from the fire some damage were done here so and what happened when i bought another blur speed controller from the local hobby store they refused to replace the one which burned and i bought another one from them and the funniest bit of that one so i paid 178 dollars for that one and it actually died after about five minutes of running so a completely new hpi blur 70 178 dollars died in five minutes running on two 7.4 batteries with this motor and the previous one survived for about one and a half months so i brought that in demanded my money back and didn't got anything so I would consider this to be total crap. So I wouldn't recommend the HPI Blur, which is just rebranded uh, Castle Link Mamba Monster, I think, to anyone, because they are just shit. It's incredible, incredible shit. So I'm waiting right now for uh, RX-8 from uh, taking and hopefully that one will hold i ordered just a controller so i'm gonna keep this motor in here i'm gonna still run on two 7.4 volt batteries just with a taking speed controller hopefully that will hold because that was spec to 210 amps continuous so hopefully that will be okay some other stuff here yeah i have a battery trace reversed as I saw recommended on, on the YouTube video about uh, mandatory upgrades to HPI and I do have uh, like a straps around here when I insert the batteries and put it all together for the run. Yeah, so this is where I am with the flux HP. So honestly right now thinking through all of this, all the parts and all the things, yeah, forgot to mention I replaced these ones with adjustable ones just to have some negative caster on front and rear or positive it is basically when when the tires uh, go like that you can see it here yeah so it will hold in the turns better yes yeah, so those are adjustable ones yeah, here it is a adjustment so i adjusted them to my taste yeah oh camera overheating again so i'll be back okay so a few more words about the integer so first of all i also bought this integer aluminum gearbox case so i started with like taking all the gears out of a standard plastic gearbox from the flux putting it on all, all in here and making sure that I don't have any jams, you know, with all the gears spinning correctly, easily, and so on and so forth. And out of a box, 
in this thing we didn't. So a very top one, so this shaft uh, couldn't spin very well. So the rest were okay, but the top one couldn't just because I'm not sure if you could see it here, but it was too tight, too tight fit in in for for bearing in this hole, and it was too tight side to side basically. So there was no play back and forth at all. And if you tighten all the screws on this gearbox, when you tighten the top ones completely, that shaft couldn't spin. So I did some mod, removing some aluminum, deepening the holes and that helped. So when I managed to make it all spin very well, I tried to install it on the flux and it just didn't install. So, so these holes were aligned correctly and that's pretty much it. So this one this one, this one, that one, and the other side was, were all misaligned. So I couldn't put my screws in very well. Actually, I tried one, and the actual screw broke. Yeah, I'm back. So, a few other things which I replaced. So, I have an example of two of these cups. So, these two, I believe, go into with differentials, or bigger ones. So I place actually walls on the gearbox and on the differentials to these shiny heavy duty ones comparing to the standards, which are just like that. It's probably not a mandatory, but just after what I, um, after my experience with flux excess, I know this can wear out, so I kind of predicted a problem wear and replace with something better. Uh, as I said, I do have them all installed on the car already. Probably will be hard to see. Yeah, I do have this cover from RPM. Which again, I had to trick it a little bit so it would fit into a bigger chassis of Excel. So it's holding there with two straps around like that. And it's modified in here, right, uh, right where the strap goes, so the strap actually would hold it in place well, so there is a notch in where I did. So, things like that. So I'm not sure what else I can say, probably about the integers, so the gearbox case is crap, doesn't work, doesn't fit, basically. Even you can modify to spin. I mean, you can modify a box so everything will spin within it correctly. And of course, if you don't, when you overload the motor, it will overheat and everything will die. So, probably the motor will burn. So, if you blind, you just install the gears and where it's not gonna work. And if you do everything correctly, it still does not fit into a chassis. I consider that as a piece of crap and it goes to the trash. It will go to the trash after this review. I just want to keep some of these parts just to show to you guys. Alright. And now a thing from Intergy which doesn't work. Those steering links which I bought. The size is correct but the problem with this is balls at the end. They are so small. I mean flushed very close to the actual link it does not allow suspension to move up and down very well so if you look at the standard one from HPI you can see it is taller on one side and this is what helps it to actually have uh, sufficient clearance for the suspension to move those this from Intergy we don't have it so we don't work so this is just piece of crap as well so the differential cases did fit quite well. Problem with them, you cannot just open them, open them as the standard ones without removing them completely out of the 
out of a car. So you cannot get into a to a differentials from this side. You cannot remove the uh, internals of a differential from here. <coughs> Sorry. But you shall see how it goes. I added a lot of Loctite in the different to the differential screw, so hopefully they will not unscrew. And I did maintenance to them, so it will should hold for at least another month or so. And the steering should seems to be the steering from Intergy seems to be okay. So that part over there, steering for seems to be okay. So looks like Intergy is something like some parts works well, some parts don't, and you never know what you get before you actually try it. I do actually also run. This piece is here from Intergy aluminum, and that piece which actually goes to and holds the wheel axle. That's also from Intergy. Those did fit well. I have some concerns about the bolts which hold them together because they, I think, may unscrew with a time, but I've had some Loctite in there. Hopefully, it will hold. We shall see. So that's about it. So to recoup the stock shocks, bad, the stock motor, great for running two eleven point one volt batteries, but not good for seven point four too weak. Uh, the stock steering column disintegrates into a small pieces like this. So mandatory upgrade in my opinion. Uh, stock frame too weak and too small to my taste. So these bits which we discussed in the beginning in the rear will break all the time. Mandatory upgrade with integer. So stock tires too small do hold quite well. XL tires, actually the rims, do break around this area too weak. Not good, but very good grip for the actual tires. So terrapins do grip well. So it's not worth actually buying just assembled tires. It's worth to buy uh, just the rubber and then mount them to Probably standard flux wheels like this for better reliability. I guess of the cups to be replaced, I guess, with something more, um, how to say, robust as with heavy duty ones, the shiny ones. The stock 17 inch mounting is crap anything except for the standard rims will unscrew so you need to replace them with proper 17 inch mountings for that you need to modify the axles drill the bigger holes and then screw those uh, nuts in like this when it will hold well so the bulletproof differentials are not bulletproof, so it breaks in many different ways. Internally, as in this example I showed you, those pins will break. And yeah, this is a transfer. Yeah, it will break as well, like that, potentially. So, speed controller will die after some time and actually the speed controller for my nephew also died on my nephew's car also died as well so we both waiting for this uh, taking speed controllers to come in it's an order right now so it should be here in a month sorry in a week or two yeah with drift control i think it's almost a mandatory it adds 
so much fun to drive a car actually so much easier much better stability on a straight line helps in the turns and so on and so forth so radio standard radio is total crap and yeah and the batteries for 8000 are holding quite well so we give approximately it depends on how you ride it but in my case it's anything from 15 to 20 minutes this is what you get out of a pair of this Have your heating again, it will come back. Yeah, one more upgrade I didn't mention before it's a stabilizer bars in the front. So, this is a standard HPI stuff. So, in the front, I run a thicker one and a thinner one in the rear. And it's a black one right here. It's like on most of a normal car setup you get. So front is thicker because most of the load in the turn it gets to the side of suspension which is in the front and outside so part of a turn and the car tries to grip. So you want to keep both rear wheels contacting the road and the front just to stabilize so much less stabilization is required in the rear. And it actually does help a lot. The car steers in a much more stable way, and stays, let's say, on the path. So that is recommended, not mandatory, but recommended for kind of a racing, a bit, a bit kind of a racing style, driving with this car. So, regarding the foot, regarding the foot above is 4 PL. I would say it's a great radio and both receivers and the transmitter are quite good. Actually the mixing on this thing allows to convert this flux to use mechanical brakes and I figured a way to keep the reverse and use mechanical brakes at the same time with just one button so I can actually show it. Let me see if I do have batteries on this thing here. Yeah. Let me go and switch model. Yeah, this is a uh, one with mechanical brakes. So you see the channel number one. This is the uh, ESC control. So if I open the throttle, oh, sorry, it's channel number two is uh, ESC control. So when I open the throttle, it goes into a channel 2, when I apply the brakes, it goes to channel 3 only, and when I want to reverse, I just press this button on the side here, and it gives me some uh, amount of uh, reverse, and that amount is controllable for another switch, but usually you just fix amount is fine, you just need to kind of adjust it to some value and then just, you know, reverse like with several presses of this because you don't really need to raise and reverse, it doesn't really matter. I had this plan to basically uh, set up another server, server for onto this car and there is a space and standard because the receiver box is a standard between nitros and, uh, and uh, electric cars, so electric flux so all these things should work now just after I lost the speed controller I'm not really sure if I want to invest much in this car anymore but yeah, probably we shall see if RX-8 holds well and probably I'll convert it to mechanical brakes because I like the feel of mechanical brakes much more than this electrical which is but uh, where the braking power is uh, much speed dependent, higher speed, higher braking power, which doesn't make much sense. Yeah. So Futaba is great, very flexible, it's 4PL, not the best radio from Futaba, but for money, I think quite good. And generically, it's actually quite amazing about the Futaba, so whatever we do, and I had experience with, it's just great, it just works. So I run a Futaba server, server in this 
very high torque server set. I don't remember exactly, is it 37 or 39 kilos at 7.4 volt. And this transmitter for PL and receiver, all of that works great. Doesn't break, just works, freaking works. Yeah, now I think on the, on the car I have, I do have, you may notice, I do have another switch and this is for the back. So I run a separate back because with a blur ESC, even with a better firmware, the maximum you can get. So with a standard firmware, you cannot adjust the blur uh, uh, back output, the internal blur back output. So with a better firmware, you can go with a version whatever, whatever it is, 1.9 it is or whatever, the latest one basically. You can adjust uh, uh, back voltage to 7. Point, just to 7 volts maximum and I wanted 7.4 so I installed a separate back and I have a separate switch one now for the radio and I run a battery, I put a battery, I, I run LiPo battery which goes straight here so this is a connector for the LiPo battery so I connect it here, the wiring goes to the back which is mounted right here it's, a, it's all isolated for I mean, I run it completely um, hermetic, so it's waterproof right now. And there is a switch for the radio. So the battery I run is uh, 14.8 volts, uh, 800 hours. It's enough for approximately three, uh, three sets of these batteries, but I only have two, so I'm covered. I don't need to replace the back battery. Uh, before I run out from off uh, like a standard battery so and of course when you have external back when you need to modify the wiring which goes into the radio from a speed controller so you need to disconnect the positive wire from the blur ESC so you keep only ground and the signal and it all works fine so this is where I am if it's set up. So I said it worked. Despite all these mechanical problems which I had to fix and this is many many hours of spending time with this car but when the speed controller died it was a shock to me and I said oh my god and probably this taking AC will be the last so if that breaks when this car goes to to the rubbish bag to the trash so so to recope is it ready to run when you buy it no it is not you basically need to disassemble it almost completely and reassemble it again putting the lock tight in all the right places and making sure the differentials are set up correctly and you need to shim the gearbox again if you want to run 7.4 we need to replace the motor so it would run correctly and you need to replace the steering server tighten up the, ste the server server spring even if you keep the standard let's say spring wear and keep the standard link uh, keep the standard steering mechanism which I recommend to replace things like that mandatory so the back is mandatory I would say so after all of that your car may run great but when UASC will eventually die so in total between me and my nephew we have right now uh, three dead blue ray SCs and that just doesn't make any sense isn't it so different motors different batteries are used and the symptoms exactly the same so basically only one of them uh, burned actually with the flames where two of them just died silently so yeah. a little smoke but when it just smoke just stops and when you flip the switch and the car just doesn't turn on you don't have this PPP DLLM standard sounds no lights on a speed controller just simply dead well would I recommend this car for anyone to buy? No. Would I buy it again? Definitely no. And generically, 
looking at these things like on the differential brake and so many different other parts just break disintegrate wheels unscrewing themselves so you had to modify and mount and buy separate parts and shocks doesn't work you need to buy new shocks they're leaking because you know the new shocks you buy just bend so this is just nightmare well this is like you spend more more time much more like hundred times more time just fixing this thing comparing to what time you actually run it so a fun factor is present until it runs but because it doesn't run for that long before it breaks so <laughs> I consider that to be low so and after having two HPI monster trucks uh, Savage XS and this HP flux uh, it's just just a nightmare i think hpi generically except for very good paint job on the body shells is total crap okay but in any case that's my opinion you may have our maybe better experiences with this thing but that's just all me i just wanted to share what i went through with this thing and if you're deciding what brand to go with I would say don't go with HPI, no way. Alright guys, hopefully that was informative enough and helpful for you. Have a great time. If you are C-car, if you already have one, just a good time. And bye.